lost him. <laughs> Pixar movie studios have been working extremely closely with Disney for years, and we all know how Disney is excellent at putting little Easter eggs and clues into their movies, which make perfect bases for fan theories. Well, Pixar isn't any different. There are tons of exciting theories floating around on the internet ready for eager fans to discover, and today we are going to take a close look at a few of the best out there. Before we begin, please remember to take a moment to leave a like down below on this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you keep up to date with all our brand new content, and be sure to turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our exciting videos. Now let's begin. One of Pixar's most popular movie series is, of course, Toy Story. There are four films so far in this franchise, and some of the characters in these movies are some of the most beloved in both Disney's and Pixar's history. This theory we have focuses on Jessie. Jessie was first introduced in Toy Story 2, and we find out that she spent the first part of her life being owned and beloved by a little girl named Emily. Jessie was Emily's best friend. The little girl did everything with her favorite cowgirl doll. She even owned a bright red cowgirl hat to match Jessie's. The two were truly inseparable, but the inevitable happened. Emily grew up. Before Jessie realized what was happening, Emily was a teenager and was no longer interested in playing pretend. Jessie lay forgotten and lonely under the bed. Jessie's chapter with Emily drew to a close when Emily left Jessie in a box of toys for a charity donation, and Jessie's heart was broken. Years later, Jessie ended up getting her happy ending, meeting Buzz, Woody, and the rest of the gang. But fans of the series noticed something very interesting about that early part of Jessie's life. Her child, Emily, wore a distinctive red cowboy hat. It was something that fans had seen in Toy Story before, mainly in the first movie, on Andy, the boy who owns Woody. But the hat didn't match Woody as his hat is brown. Maybe it's just a generic cowboy hat. Hat, or maybe Andy's mother is Emily, who kept the hat all these years and gave it to her son. We never really see a whole lot of Andy's mom, except she is super supportive of Andy's love of cowboys and playing games, and seems to really empathize with him when he worries that he lost some of his favorite toys. Could Andy's mom really be Emily, the little girl who once owned Jessie? This theory gained popularity on the internet until Pixar actually came out and confirmed it to be true. Jessie's story came full circle and she ended up being reunited with her beloved Emily and loved equally by her son. Okay, now we've covered a happy ending. Shall we get a little more sinister? I think so. Let's go to Wally. -E. What could possibly be sinister about the movie with the cute little trash robot? Well, we've got something here for you. The premise of the movie is that the planet is so overwhelmed by heaps of trash and garbage everywhere that humans have had to leave and live in space until Earth is habitable again. And cute little Wally is trying his best on Earth, attempting to clean up so that people can come back. The obvious message of the movie is that humans were so oblivious to their selfish ways that they ruined the planet completely. Which makes sense, I mean, as a species, we don't have the greatest track record, but is it possible for us to fill our own planet completely with garbage in the 700 years between now and when the movie is set? It's unlikely. I mean, garbage disposal sites are huge, and we still have a lot of space left before it becomes a problem. Not only that, but we are coming up with new ways to recycle and dispose of trash properly all the time, but what if we had help? What if it happened on purpose? We see in the movie that the huge company, by and large, present in the background of many Pixar movies, has plenty of huge shopping centers all around where Wally -E lives. We also see that, by and large, as it is an enormous corporation, actually owns the enormous luxury space liners that house humans while they are waiting for Earth to be cleaned up. Up. What if the trips orbiting the Earth on the luxury liners were advertised but failed to meet the expectations of the company? Maybe then they decided to push a bit harder and force people to leave their planet, all while advertising their liners as the most suitable replacement in the meantime. Seats on the liners sold, by and large then proceeded to blast the people on their liners with advertisements for their products constantly. There are screens and adverts everywhere and people have no escape from it trapped on a spaceship. The real villain in this adorable 
movie isn't the bad choices of the human race, it is one selfish, evil, greedy corporation trying to make as much money as possible. This next theory ties two movies together with the use of a teeny tiny little Easter egg. How many of you guys have seen Brave? Well, do you remember that scene where Merida follows the wisps to the hidden witch's cottage in the middle of the spooky, foggy forest? Well, that witch had a whole bunch of wood carvings in her cottage, literally everywhere you looked, and they were all bears, spilling out of every corner of her tiny house. Bears as far as the eye could see, except one carving. One single carving tucked away was of Sully from Monsters, Inc. The camera is only on it for a moment, but it was enough for the most dedicated fans to notice, and from this, a whole crazy idea was born. So this means that the weird little witch from Brave has some kind of connection to Monsters, Inc.? Hmm, it's possible, but Sully didn't live in our world. The denizens of Monstropolis could get to Earth, though, through the special doors on the scare floor at Monsters, Inc., so this lady must have seen Sully through a door. We know from the movie that all the monsters have their kids to scare. Not every monster will get to visit every kid. So the theory goes that the witch was one of Sully's kids, and that is how she knows what he looks like. You could stop there, and it's already pretty cool. But the theory takes this one step step further and actually pins down exactly who the witch is, we know from Monsters, Inc. that Boo gets incredibly attached to Sully. At the end of the movie, she even tries to open her closet door again to find him. Maybe she never forgot about him when she grew up. There may have been a way for her to figure out the technology the monsters of Monstropolis use to travel between doors, and in her own efforts to track down Sully, she may have used a door to move through time instead of through worlds. The theory suggests that she transports herself back to the time of Brave, where the futuristic door technology may have looked a bit like magic. And her obsession with Sully is what inspired her to carve all those bears and make all her spells bear-related. She was just thinking of her childhood best friend all the time. And one more thing, in Boo's childhood room, we see her name in big decorative letters on the bedroom wall. The letters spell out Mary. And where does the name Mary come from? Scotland, where Brave is set, and where the witch lives lives in her cottage full of homemade bears. This next theory is also related to Monsters, Inc., but ties in with another Pixar movie series, Toy Story. We think that Andy also has a monster, but his isn't Sully. This theory states that Andy's monster is actually Randall, Sully and Mike's arch nemesis. It would actually make sense if the monsters in Monster, Inc. visited different homes and characters in other Pixar movies. After all, there are not a whole lot of scarers in Monster as each monster has a list of kids that are theirs. So if each child in Pixar Extended Universe has an allocated monster, it would make sense that we have met the monster and know who they are. In Monsters, Inc., we have a small scene with Randall Boggs practicing his camouflage technique against a variety of wallpapers. One of those wallpapers is the very distinctive cloud-patterned wallpaper from Andy's bedroom. Any Pixar fan will have recognized this immediately, but is it a clue or just a little nod? nod to the earlier movie. Another little clue points toward this theory being true, Andy's closet door. Upon first inspection, his door looks quite generic. It seems like a fairly simple white painted door. However, Andy's door is unique in the fact that it has five panels on it. In the hundreds of doors seen in the door factory at Monstropolis, none of them match Andy's door. But at Monsters University, there is a door that matches Andy's door exactly. Theory proved? Not concretely, but it's definitely pointing a certain way. That's it for this video. Please take a moment to leave a like down below and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. See you soon!